Growing up, it wasn't that unusual to come into my family's garage and find us sitting around the lawnmower eating spaghetti dinner. See, I grew up with three siblings and an odor lab. Now, by odor lab, I don't mean my ripening Dukes of Hazzard lunchbox that kept getting shoved under the back seat of my dad's conversion van. I mean a legitimate smell laboratory that was in the basement of our home. It was a crux of my parents' business they started that helped companies understand and measure smell. So let's say you're a landfill that's trying to understand odors in the community. They would help train people's noses to collect solid data. Thus, dinner in the garage, keeping those everyday odors outside from interfering with the testing that was going on inside. So it was all in the name of science. <laughs> and at that time, my friends would refer to me as the smell kid. Now that's, that's very different from the smelly kid. And it was important distinction for my confidence. But those same friends to this day will still remark about the smells that emanated from our basement during that time. All of this is a little unique and unusual, but it's part of my story. Not everybody has odor so integral in their upbringing, but I guarantee you, everybody has an odor story. <laughs> so our sense of smell, it's really unique. We have these nerves hanging out in the back of our nose. They're the only nerves in the human body that are connected to our environment and directly hooked into our brain. When these nerves pick up different odorant molecules, it sends a signal two different directions. First, it goes into the frontal cortex. That's where we're making conscious decisions or have conscious awareness of smells. So that's what happens when you are trying to decide whether you like a certain perfume or not. Or maybe you go to the fridge to sniff the Tupperware, taking a sniff to find out is this still good to eat or if it's destined for the garbage. The second place that signal goes is into our limbic system. This is our emotion and memory center of our brain. So this is the part of the brain that I walk into a building and I also have this immediate reaction like, wow, this place smells exactly like my elementary school. Now, I didn't walk in and think about, what does this place smell like? No, my elementary school materialized right between my eyes in a second. Didn't have to think about it. We all have these types of memories. Many are very individual and some are shared. Back in that same elementary school, my friends and I used to really like it when the teacher passed out worksheets that were fresh from the copier. Now, this is way back long ago, so this was like a ditto machine. We would grab those things and smell them. I, I, you know, fresher the better. <laughs> or there's, this, there's a memory of, you know, a happy meal at McDonald's, or maybe this, the, uh, the memory of a little bit too much cologne or body spray at a middle school dance. Um, but there's, of course, sort of the most commonly referenced childhood memory of all. Some of you are thinking about it. Play-Doh. <laughs> and there's no wonder that Play-Doh trademarked that smell. It's that important to their brand. So we all have these experiences with smell. They come to us. They bring us these memories. They take us places. They give us a sense of comfort. But not all smells bring smiles. Some smells are universally offensive. Even a baby might turn its head away from smells of waste or death and decay. It's like it's built into our DNA that there's some element, some primitive piece that's protecting us from harm, even these things we haven't experienced before. But yet, even our background and experience can give us different impressions. We tell a story of a bunch of years ago we had a training, and in that training we do an icebreaker that has people talk about what are your kind of best and worst odor memories. And in this icebreaker, a woman raised her hand and said, I've got a really weird one for you. She said, I love the smell of horse manure. And everybody in the room kind of turns and she says, wait, let me explain. She says, I grew up on a farm. I grew up around horses. I rode the horses and I just loved being around the animals. And everybody in the room kind of said, yeah, I get that. Next day, another training session, that woman's sister was in the class. And in that icebreaker, came around to her, she raised her hand, and she said, I've got one. I have a disdain for the smell of horse manure. 
And those who were there the day before, we kind of turn and look, and she says, so let me explain. I grew up on a farm. I grew up around horses. And that smell of horse manure reminds me of all the chores I had to do constantly before I was allowed to go out and have any real fun. So it's interesting there that you have same nature, same nurture, yet a different knowing, a different experience. So we can take a broader view of that and think about our communities where we live, the smells in our town, whether it's the outdoors or businesses in our town, or potentially the industries in our town. We all might have different opinions about those smells based on our personal upbringing, our personal experiences. What's very important is that our perception of smell has a direct link to our health and our well-being. If we smell pleasant smells, we have a sense of cleanliness, we have a sense of comfort, relaxation, calm. We have a long history of using scent in our worship spaces. They're used to bring sanctity and serenity to the space. Different cultures, different religions choose different herbs or spices or different oils to create a calming space, to ritualistically bring us to a space of mindfulness. In comparison, bad smells can make us feel uncleanly, feel, you know, a sense of dirtiness or, or, or um, contamination. Foul odors in our town from different industries often give people a sense of a fear, a fear of harm. Some of them even have, a, have reported headaches or loss of appetite, trouble sleeping, these different nonspecific symptoms that they relate to this constant invasion of the smells into their home. It, they have this sense that there's perceived pollution, and thus it gives them this decrease in their overall well-being. For perspective, in other parts of the developed world, nuisance odors are treated much like other pollutants. Facilities have to address nuisance odors just like they address hazardous waste, or they might be concerned about whether they have, contam have chemicals that could contaminate groundwater. These nuisance odors are, are chemicals that they're not going to be toxic, but upon exposures or presentation to the community multiple times could lead to a negative experience. In the US, we continue to have a long history of a wait and see approach to odors, a very reactionary approach to odors. It's typically only when the citizens start to pick up their pitchforks or pick up their torches and march on the facility or march on City Hall, it's at that time that we start to see reaction. And even then, often that reaction comes with disagreement, turmoil, confusion, as lawyers and engineers fight over what's the correct course of action when there's lack of a clear process to be followed. To some of these communities, that's a sign of pollution. But there's other communities that this is a sign of something much bigger. Environmental justice calls for fair and equal treatment of the environment and a right to have a clean environment. There's an old saying of being from the wrong side of the tracks. That phrase comes from the train coming through town and the smoke from the train blowing downwind in a certain direction, or the dust being kicked up from that train blowing in a certain direction. So being from the wrong side of the tracks was being from the less desirable side of the tracks. This makes us think about where are the facilities located in our towns. Or maybe the more appropriate question is what peoples we place near those facilities. So, with all of this, there seems to be sort of a mixed messaging with odor. While we take this reactionary approach in the environmental side of odor, we take a more positive, intentional approach in consumer goods. Businesses invest millions of dollars into scenting products or improving odors of products. Odor is a significant marketable attribute of these products. These companies 
have invested smell in different areas and different sectors. Hotels have intentionally scented toiletries and even common spaces in the hotel area to make you feel welcome when you come back. You have um, different uh, restaurants are routing smells through the space. The open restaurant concept, that's a, not just a visual experience. There's odor at play there as well. Theme parks have led the way. Disney's been well known to add the smell of chocolate chip cookies being baked, being presented into their parks. Get you thinking about the treats you might want to buy or get your kids asking for the treats from the moment you walk through the gate. Las Vegas casinos add scenting to their themes, kind of bringing you into that immersive experience and also awakening your awareness, your awareness for your thirst for Lady Luck and thus spending more money. We have this continual increase in scenting and in investment in money in these areas. Did you know that in 2010, multiple stadiums tested this theory by putting the smell of buttered popcorn and cotton candy into the concourse. They saw an increase in concession sales at the beginning of the event. We saw this in 2013. We sent it a production of Willy Wonka, and we put the smell of chocolate and bubble gum into the theater. At intermission, they cleared the concession stand. It was really, really amazing. We as consumers, we see this on a daily basis. We get this manipulation, we accept it, sometimes we really soak it up, and it works. It works. Now, all of this talk of the sense of smell has never really been more important than we've seen during the pandemic. How often when you're talking to somebody about COVID-19, how quickly did they say, did you lose your sense of smell? Did you know somebody who lost their sense of smell? Sense of smell was thrust into the spotlight as tens of thousands of people lost their sense of smell. It became a key indicator in the early stages of the pandemic. Through that, in conversations, we saw that people generally had a decrease in their well-being. It added to the discomfort. They had concerns because they couldn't be protected of smelling that food in the fridge and deciding whether it was still good to eat. They couldn't smell natural gas. They felt a sense of loneliness because they couldn't smell their home, their babies, their pets. All of this showed how essential odor is in the quality of life. It's key to our experiences. We continue to look at odors and see advancements in different areas. As we come out of the pandemic and people think about and have this new awareness or a different awareness for a sense of smell, will it change how we act? Will it change how people are perceiving smell? Will businesses continue to increase their investment in scenting of products? Will we see more interest in scenting in the arts, both visual and in theatrical arts? Will we see new technologies in video gaming or the ever-expanding metaverse? Will we see this? Will we expect it? Will we desire it in other parts of our life? Will we see it be intertwined into education or medicine? Odor is becoming an immense marketable attribute. It also includes scent-free or fragrance-free products because lack of a smell is a legitimate desired experience as well. So, you know, I don't have a superhuman nose. However, I did grow up in an odor lab. <laughs> and what I can see is that we treat smell sort of like the middle child, sort of off to the side, even though it does create and add to the greater experience. But as a middle child, and the smell kid, <laughs> I can tell you that odor has its very own merits. So what is your odor story? Oh, wait. Anybody else smell something? <laughs> kind, of, kind of have a craving for popcorn. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs>